HEED stands for Home Energy Efficient Design. It is a free software tool that is intended for homeowners, architects, designers, contractors, builders, uh, to help them design more energy efficient and more comfortable homes. This is the initial design screen. It is where each new project begins and where the demo would begin in HEED. Um, it asks you a few questions about your building and on the basis of your answers it will design a code compliant energy efficient home and then it will design a second scheme which is slightly more energy efficient again meeting the same set of specifications. So here um, he has defaulted to assume that you would like to construct a brand new home although you could have picked it picked a remodel or a uh, an addition on the exterior. It assumes that you would like to do a single family home, but you could choose a townhouse or a condominium or apartment. Uh, it assumes two stories, although you can change again these uh, values. 2,000 square feet, sloped roof, and it assumes that you are going to be in climate zone 9, which happens to be where UCLA is located. He comes with climate data for all 16 uh, climate zones in California and it comes with data for most of the zip codes in California. But if you'd like you can also download climate data for climate stations any place around the northern hemisphere. Uh, you can add your own title here if you'd like. It asks you if you'd like to attach a garage. Let's assume not. And now it's begun to calculate scheme one with, for all 8,760 hours of the year. And it also calculated scheme two for all 8,760 hours of the year. And this is the home energy rating screen that represents the performance of not just scheme one that we specified, and scheme two, which as you can see is slightly better. Uh, in this case, it's 86% of the value of scheme one, so it's about 14% better. Uh, but we have gone ahead and designed a number of additional schemes, and we'll show you how that works. In this case, each of these design decisions has resulted in, in a reduction of energy consumption until finally at scheme nine, you can see that uh, it is 30% of the um, base case or the code compliant building. So this is rather energy efficient building. Eventually uh, in the year 2020 all new California residential buildings will be zero net energy which means as far as this graph is concerned they will all be down here at the zero line in terms of energy performance. This uh, set of screens or uh, plots is the energy cost screen. Uh, these blue areas represent the cost for electricity. Here's the cost for the electricity of our code compliant house, which is looks like about $700 a year. And as you can see, the costs are falling slightly. Uh, here is the condition where we've added um, a heat pump uh, instead of a gas furnace. Um, so the electric costs have gone up as you can see. Um, the imported energy is above the line and the on-site generated energy is below the line. So here in Scheme 9 we've actually added photovoltaic panels to the building and you can see that it's probably generating more electricity uh, than it's purchasing. So the value of the electricity generated is greater than the value of the electricity purchased in this particular case. This second set of charts represents uh, fuel here for the uh, Scheme 1, the code compliant building. Uh, it looks like it's about um, 300 plus dollars a month, a year, and uh, 
you can see that it's pretty hard to reduce the total building cost because the building is using so little uh, heating energy. But here on schemes 8 and 9 we see below the line uh, on-site generated um, solar hot water which displaces some of this uh, energy that would be used to heat the water. These, uh, the electricity and the fuel are added together for this total energy uh, plot and as you can see um, at this point the idea is if you can make the line, the bar chart below the, the uh, line zero and equal the bar chart above the line zero then you have a zero net in this case cost building. In this chart we can also plot uh, not cost but we'll plot electric in, uh, kilowatt hours and you can see here now this if we can make this bar equal the bar below the line we have a zero net energy building in this particular case um, it says it's still 30 percent consuming 30 percent of the power of the um, uh, base case building This is uh, another of Heed's uh, graphic representations. In this case, it's representing uh, an analog of comfort. Um, the, all, this shows all 8,760 hours of the year. What, pr what proportion of the hours are free running? In other words, when is the building passively heated and cooled? and the blue area represents the number of hours where the air conditioning is running and the red represents the number of hours when the furnace would be running to heat the building. And as you can see when we finally get over here to scheme number nine, these tiny little blue and red bars represent a very small amount of heating and cooling energy and this building has 8,430 hours of passive performing performance or free running where no heating or cooling energy is being used. This is the floor planner screen which shows you the uh, building that HEED has designed to our 2,000 square foot building. We've made a copy of Scheme 2. Um, these are all the windows that HEED has decided uh, meet the code and they are all instantly delivered to the curb uh, around the building site. So here's our south windows. Um, the, in, in this uh, screen we can go ahead and design the building as we'd like to do. For example, if we'd like to add uh, another piece of building, let's say we'd like to put a studio out on the front of this building, um, let's say we'd like to uh, put a little porch out here and let's say we would like to add some a front walkway and maybe a sidewalk out in front. Um, we can add uh, trees if we'd like. Here we can put some in on the north side of this building. Uh, we can add neighbors if we'd like. Uh, let's put them here so that they might or might not do some shading of our building and its possible future solar collectors. Um, we can add a garage if we'd like, which might go here. Each of these squares, by the way, is uh, four foot by four foot. So this garage is one, two, three, four, five. It's a 20 by 20 foot garage, which is kind of reasonable. Let's put a driveway in just to make it look more realistic. The driveway and the front yard don't really affect the energy performance of the building, but they help you as the designer um, understand the um, geometry of your building and it makes it more realistic so that your tent, you're, you're more likely to be able to catch things that need to be added. For example, um, in a later screen we'll show you how to put windows onto the 
building, but here's a you can just click and drag them off the curb if you like. I'll put a couple in here. And probably there's a door back here someplace, so we'll put a door in. And you can do the same to all of the windows that that uh, belong on this building. Um, let's go up one story and put some more, make the neighbor a two-story building also. Let's add it, something like that. Oh, he needs to be a little bit darker, a little bit wider than one, than four feet. Um, we can add taller trees too if we'd like, or make any of the ones we already have taller. Um, there's a great number of things you can do to add to this building. Right now, it's a little odd looking because it doesn't have all its windows, but it's getting to be close to the way we would like to have it. Uh, we have added some more square footage to the building, so its performance is probably not going to be as good as it was before. This screen uh, is the orientation screen, so now we can take that building we just designed and change it uh, to whatever orientation we like, but in fact, let's just leave it facing south. This is the uh, the way build, uh, windows are added. If you Here's the whole set of windows and doors that already exist, and if you'd like to add more, you just click on this and pick out whatever window you'd like to add. If you'd like to change the size of a window, uh, this window is, uh, we can just click and drag it. We can either, um, let's see, let's pick, well, in this case, we can add, make it any, any shape we wanted, but let's, uh, right now, let's make it a 6 by 5.8 foot window. That's too big. Let's make it much smaller. Um, and you can change any the windows in number and in dimension if you want to type it in and in this case you can add overhangs and the right fins for shading. Uh, this is the window layout screen as you can see it's in a much larger format and now it's going to be easier to to more accurately place windows and doors get them correctly located. In HEED, um, all the basic design elements are defined in lists such as this. The user can pick off what they choose. In this case, for the more energy efficient building, HEED has uh, selected wood frame of fiberglass uh, windows. And here, the window that they that HEED chose is clear, double pane, low E, uh, with an insulated fiberglass frame. It has the same U value as the code compliant window. This is the energy code minimum window, but it has allows for more solar heat gain. So in this case, it's a much better passive solar window. Here's another screen in this case that specifies insulation value. Right now we have current code levels of insulation for the walls and the roof and the ceiling but you could add super insulation. It also allows you to model buildings that were designed and built before the code was enforced that may have no insulation at all. Notice that HEAT has a series of uh, hot buttons up here. In this case, the basic design list contains all of the screens that have the data that you need to do a basic building design. Uh, next to it, is the advanced design. These are numerically intense screens. This is where you would like, if you would like to put in the exact description of your U value or your window solar heat gain coefficient or any other number of things, you can do that here. Um, this is uh, where the 3D screens are. And in fact, we'll show you one of the 3D screens now. Let's look at, um, I don't know, uh, total building loads. Heat is now calculating the performance of the building that we have partially designed in this case um, and comparing it with any other building that you choose. In this case, we'll compare it with our energy code building. Uh, this plot shows you for every hour of the day and for every day of the year, for every month in this case, monthly average data for every month of the year. Um, 
in vertical is um, positive values in this case of total loads and it's going to be in BTU per hour so that you can see here the um, uh, difference between the building that we just designed with the new um, studio let's call it on the outside on the first floor and the neighbors next door in the attached garage uses a uh, little bit more energy than the original code compliant building as we see. The next button uh, called evaluate opens up this set of options. In this case let's look at the shadows and sunlight option. Here we see uh, the building as it's finally designed. Now we're at scheme 9 and you can see that we have a series of photovoltaic panels and a series of solar hot water panels that could themselves all be moved up and placed on, let's say, on the roof. Uh, when the time, and there's another. We won't take time to do all that. But the uh, by hitting this button, you can see that the sun can move around the site, and you can see how effectively your windows are shaded or exposed. In this case, for January and now February you'll see that the windows are quite exposed to passive solar gain. Uh, this design feature can be adjusted uh, by moving the overhangs or by uh, moving the trees or by changing the orientation, a variety of things like this. But you can see already when we're now in, that was March and this is April, notice that the bottom of the windows is, remains in shade as the sun moves around the site. So this says that at this point in time, the windows are not adding to the passive gain of the building. You can check on different sizes of the sides of the building. You can see that we have not placed the windows on the west or the north. Uh, if we were going to place them on the west, we'd probably sneak them in behind the, the shading here, the trees, so that they would get some shading at least a little bit from the uh, the trees on the west side of our site. Um, it is the fact that whether or not you move the windows onto the wall or leave them at the curb, um, they will receive the same amount of solar gain uh, in, in, into the building. This is the library uh, list. It's basically the control panel for the operation of HEED. You can select schemes, copy them, rename them, erase them, uh, combine them into HVAC zones. You can have up to nine schemes as we see in HEED and you can then have as each scheme becomes a project and you can have as many projects as you like. Uh, other things that are available here is the option of uh, copying, of going to the DOE uh, EPW site and bringing in weather data from any place that you would like in the northern hemisphere. Another important button on this tray is the help button. For every screen uh, there are a series of context specific help um, panels or definitions that basically explain how to do good energy conserving design. They give you all of the details that you might need to know. It's kind of like a, a textbook on energy conserving design that's um, specific to each individual screen that you use. You can download HEED uh, at no cost from this website. It was developed at UCLA with support from California utility ratepayers under a contract from the California Energy Commission. Uh, future uh, tutorials will explain how to use many of HEED's other features to design more energy efficient and more comfortable buildings. Thank you.